how the Stream Nannies started on my wedding day. My wife and I got married at the Lighthouse in Montauk, and one of the people uh, at the wedding was a local bayman. I asked him how far away Block Island was from Montauk, and he said, 18 miles, and don't try it. So the next morning, I got my kayak, and I paddled from, from Montauk Point to Block Island. And on my way, I had an idea that this would be a great way to start a charity to raise money for local children. The first year I was involved with the paddle, we were one of the support boats at that time with the Kimberly, and we gave them a hand. We've done every paddle. I first heard about paddlers about 11 years ago. I heard about some crazy surfers paddling to Block Island from Montauk and didn't think too much more about it until five or six years later when I was asked to participate. On average, Paddlers has about 50 paddlers, some years up to 60 paddlers. Each paddler is required to raise a minimum of $1,500, which they get through sponsorship from their friends and relatives and family. It doesn't matter where you get the money. You can donate the $1,500 yourself, which a lot of people do. And most people give or get significantly more than that. But $1,500 is what we ask people to do. We've raised well over $1.3 million. The paddlers now know how to find us. So we're seeing more and more people doing the paddle multiple times. The group of people that we attract are from all over the country now, not just watermen, but also recreational paddlers that train to do this and look forward to the process of making the crossing. It is not a race. Uh, we, we stop frequently. We regroup, make sure everybody's feeling well. We probably stop four or five times on an average paddle. About every 45 minutes we'll take a break. Each boat's got their cooler full of drinks and bananas and whatnot. And they'll pull up and we'll start throwing drinks out to them. It's like the food's flying. Well, I've always kind of said my role is chief banana thrower. It was like feeding the seagulls almost. We just throw drinks at them and they wing those empty bottles right back at us. <laughs> the biggest thing I think is just making sure that the weather will be okay, the tide. We really like to have a southwest wind, a following wind to push everybody over. And so we strive to make it more of a reasonable expectation for everybody. Safety is always our number one issue, so one of the main things we try to do was head counts. The way we keep people organized is by having the ocean rescue with us, and then we have support boats in the front and in the back, and that everybody is paddling as a group. If they're going really slow and they can't keep up with the pace, they'll go onto a sled connected to a jet ski, and then we'll ferry them up to the front of the pack. It's a long way. It's like running a marathon. There is no way to shorten the distance and 18 miles on a paddleboard or prone paddling or in a kayak is at least four or five hours and it is a it's a real accomplishment it makes people very proud the experience itself when you're paddling is quite remarkable i've had moments there when i looked around and thought it's not ever going to get any better than this it's truly wonderful it's a memorable and rewarding experience we help a variety of charities, and the number of charities is different every year. We provide funds for at least four, and as many as eight charities a year. And those proposals will range from $500 to $30,000. We formed a really nice partnership with several of the nonprofits, including the Bridgehampton School, which has been a really great partner. Some of the teachers have actually come out and paddled with us. There's the robotics program, and you really understand the, the impact it's had on these kids. We started the robotics club with about 15 students. It was a very, very diverse group, and they were really super enthusiastic. It was a big surprise. The robotics program has helped these kids by not only giving them 21st century skills in programming, development of ideas and concepts, leadership, fabrication, but the other thing it's done is it's really given them an outlet. Robotics is where we build a robot after we're given a task and we compete using that task with 50 other schools and the top 10 from those schools go to St. Louis for the Nationals. Without Paddlers for Humanity, we wouldn't have been able 
to even start and run these programs. Now we're finding that kids are willing to stay here until late hours in the night, really dedicated towards working towards a common goal of building this robot to compete. I'd come after school and Ms. Fives was like, oh, we're doing robotics. I was like, I guess I'll help because why not? And then I ended up really enjoying myself, so I was like, I really want to do this. We had zero expectations because we had no idea what we were really doing. So we showed up at the competition and all of a sudden, one of the local schools came to us and said, you are in the top eight. So that means you're going to the quarterfinals and you get to choose a team. And we were just over the moon. It was, it was more than we could ever have imagined. Yeah. One year we competed and we eventually got up to St. Louis. And then last year we, we were close, but we didn't quite make it. Paddlers has been an integral part of making robotics work. They, they recognized that we were trying to get kids to behave better and they wanted to support that. And their support gave kids the outlet that they needed to find a focus. The program that Paddlers for Humanity contributes to is PBIS, Positive Behavior Intervention Systems. And basically it's a big umbrella of program that we have at the school to positively reinforce good behaviors in, in students. And this program has helped countless students um, integrate themselves into our school on a daily basis. I am very grateful for what their organization has done for funding countless clubs and activities for the school. This is my 12th year and I'm starting to look at colleges and I'm really interested in game design, computer science and music. When we fund a project where local children go to another country to build a school or to help create and build infrastructure, we're looking at building lo local leaders. Build on, we were able to establish a local chapter here in the East Hampton School District so that kids from this area go to a developing country and actually build a school. Build on! I'm going to Salmon! Build on! Salmon! Build on! Build On is a nonprofit organization that funds the construction of schools throughout the world in certain impoverished countries. Every year we take between 15 and 20 students to various countries. We've been to Nepal, Nicaragua, Senegal, and this year we'll be going to Malawi. I think what the students get out of these trips is a sense of perspective. They realize that there are more important things in life than perhaps they had originally thought. We traveled to a remote village in the mountains of Nicaragua where we helped bring education to impoverished kids and adults. The experience for the kids is amazing. To watch our students here from East Hampton go through this transformation where they're unsure and nervous to the moment that we leave where they're crying because of the amazing connections that they've made. It's just so cool. I gained a lot of knowledge from these people who had nothing and while we were teaching them, they were kind of teaching us too. I learned that my cell phone definitely isn't as important as I think it is. I also learned that education is such an important part of life and that every child around the world should have the chance for an education as well as adults. It's a very cool partnership that we have here because we have Paddlers for Humanity helping us, we're helping build on, and you know it seems to be like this positivity multiplier. I know I want to um, incorporate service into my career somehow. So, and that tri this trip has definitely had a, played a factor into my decision to do that. I know Paddlers for Humanity made a huge donation to build on and to our club, and without them, we wouldn't have been able to go on the trip at all. We take pride in, in supporting our local charities in the Hamptons because there's so many children here that slip through the cracks. There's so many children that have needs that people haven't addressed. There's probably greater wealth here than in most other places, but there can also be the flip side of that, which are people who are truly struggling. I'm proud of what we've done, and, and I want to continue being proud and being part of that community and making sure that we keep going forward. Every dime goes to charity. Every minute is donated time. Everything's donated. Just a, a bunch of people on the East End trying to help the lives of the children that live out here at this point. The last 11 years is something we can all be really proud of. It's a great start. I feel like we've planted the seed to allow this thing to just grow stronger and stronger, bigger and bigger. 
I foresee 75 paddlers and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of more dollars coming in and look forward to keeping the dream alive and making this happen every year. I'd like to thank Paddlers for Humanity as a paddler, as a teacher, and as a community member. The work you've done is truly amazing. Thank you Paddlers for Humanity for helping our school. Thank you so much Paddlers for Humanity for allowing me to take this trip with all my friends and change my perspective on life. Thank you Paddlers for Humanity. I just want to say thank you to everybody for letting me become part of this. Um, it's really, through the years, I've grown to love it. It's a big part of my life now during the summertime when we get geared up and I've gained a lot of respect for everybody, the paddlers, the, the people on the board, and um, thanks for everything, guys. I just want to thank paddlers for allowing me to help out and um, it's just been a real privilege and honor and a joy to uh, work with everybody and um, I'd love to continue as long as possible and uh, aloha. <laughs>